primary purpose of today's webinar is to talk about remote instruction. Um, Get More Math is a tool that is used by teachers, um, and what Get More Math primarily provides is a practice um, it's practice tools to support what it is you're doing in the classroom. So it's supporting that instruction. Obviously, in light of recent circumstances, we've all had to get creative. We've all had to start adapting. And we are now providing that instruction in remote ways. We are whether, whether that's sending videos or doing live conferences, we're having to look for new ways to start providing that for our students. So that's what this webinar is all about. What are some of the tools and resources out there? What are some of the ways that you can jump into providing those resources? Before I actually start talking about that specifically, I'm gonna give uh, Josh Britton, the creator of Get More Math, a chance to just say hello and tell you a little bit about some other things that we have coming up here soon. So Josh, take it away. Well, hello. Uh, thank you for the minute there, Robbie. This will be very quick. I just wanna say two things. Uh, first of all, we're all in this together. And if there's any way we can help you, just tell us and we will do our utmost to do whatever that, whatever that would be. And then secondly, I just wanted to let you know that we, like many of you, are also concerned about children, students who don't have access to digital platforms. So here, this webinar is all about digital instruction, long-term, long-distance instruction. I just wanted to let you know that next week on a Wednesday, I'm gonna run a webinar on using our platform to create worksheets. So it's, it's very exciting to us. We've been going in overdrive and tonight we're gonna to release a feature, hopefully, that makes it possible to print worksheets from Get More Math. So with that feature on, if you have our, an account with Get More Math, you could print any of our content in any order as much as you wanted, along with answer keys if you wanted it. So we're really excited to provide that so that you can help work towards equity trying to make sure that you're addressing the needs of kids who are on the other side of the digital divide. So I just put up that plug in there for you. If you're interested, watch for some kind of link or advertisement next Wednesday, same time. Alrighty, I'll turn it back to the main flow. Thanks, Robbie. Awesome. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, and thank you for creating Get More Math. It really is an incredible tool. Um, that being said, if you are not a Get More Math user, we're still glad that you're here. We're going to hopefully be able to provide some helpful content just in terms of video creation. Um, but if you're interested in trying out our program, we do give it away for free for an entire academic school year. Um, so if you go to our website, getmoremath.com, there's a free trial button there. You can click, enter your information, get set up with an account. And that account will be good all the way through July of 2021. And you can start using it, obviously, right now in a remote capacity. Hopefully, we'll get back into those classrooms soon and you can start using it with your students there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and keep moving. Um, I am seeing that quite a few people are having a hard time hearing me. Um, I don't believe that's the case for everyone, though. So I'm going to assume that that's uh, on an individual basis and that things are working all right for most folks. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just keep moving. All right. So what we're going to start with today is a piece of optional hardware. This is going to be a digital pen and tablet that we've discovered is really, really useful for doing some of that online instruction. Because you no longer have a whiteboard or a chalkboard available to you, this allows you to do some of that written work with your students but I am saying it's optional because this is something you would have to purchase. And we'll actually see Pam demonstrate that for us in just a bit so you know what we're talking about. We're gonna go through some web conferencing tools because you are no longer in the classroom actually interacting with your students. We need a way to provide that one-on-one -on -one instruction or that group instruction, web conferencing steps in and does a good job. We wanna talk about recording videos. What are some tools that make recording easy to do? And then how do we share those videos with our students? And then we're gonna take some time to answer questions. I do wanna pause and mention right here that neither Pam nor myself are video making experts. We started researching for this maybe a couple of weeks ago and we've gathered um, some answers from other teachers that are already doing these things. Um, and we've put together the best presentation and the best tools that we've found, um, but we're not going to be able to answer any particularly specific questions about the software, at least not yet. Um, but those handouts that are included should help with some of the basic getting started process. And every program that we talk about also has a um, very, very rich support system in place as well. So you can always access the support available from those websites, um, whether that's Zoom or you know things like GoToWebinar like we're using right here. Um, so you can access that. 
All right. I mentioned the handouts already. You can also ask questions, as many of you have found. Um, so please feel free to take advantage of that, and we will pause at the end to deal with some of those questions. So the optional hardware that I mentioned is the digital pen and tablet by Wacom Intuos. The version that we like best is a fairly affordable option. It's about 70 bucks if you buy that on Amazon. Um, and this is that piece that I mentioned that just makes writing on your computer much simpler. You can work through problems, you can show how to graph, and you can do that all right online. Pam's gonna show you exactly what that looks like in just a few minutes. Web conferencing, you might already have something like this set up at your school. You might use it for your internal meetings, just with staff meetings, or you have something already in place to interact with your students. If that's the case, keep doing what you're used to. That makes the most sense. But if you haven't tried this before, here are some of the common options that folks are using already. And the one that we like best, our pick, is gonna be Zoom. That's because Zoom is free and easy to use, and they have quite a wide range of different features that you can access. That's going to provide features for the actual conferencing side of things, as well as the ability to record what you're doing so you can start creating content. Also, I pulled this right from their website, but because of the global pandemic we're experiencing, Zoom has been making it easier for schools to use. So they've been lifting the 40 minute meeting limit that is currently in place or that is normally in place on free accounts. Um, so all you need to do is reach out and say, hey, we're an educational institution. Can we use your program? And they're making that accessible to you. So Pam will walk through some of how to use Zoom in just a bit. When it comes to recording videos, like I said, Zoom actually has a recording feature. So you can record your entire 40 minute lesson or you can do shorter lessons, use the whiteboard, use whatever features you uh, like in the program and record it and send it to your students. If you use a Mac, you've got QuickTime by default on your computer. You can use that to record your screen. Other teachers have said tools like Snagit and EduCreations or Microsoft Teams also provide some good resources. But the one that we like best is Screencastify primarily because it's free and easy to use. Now, the one limiting factor here is that Screencastify is Chrome exclusive. So you will need to be a Google Chrome user, that's the browser that you use, because Screencastify is actually a Chrome extension. It gets plugged in right to the top of your screen, makes it super simple to record your screen, edit the video that you create, and then you can share straight to your Google Classroom, upload it to YouTube, or just email the link to your student. And Pam will walk through some of the features that comes with that as well. And then just mentioned sharing recorded videos. Part of why we like Screencastify is that it makes sharing so simple. But the easiest way to share these videos that we've found is probably going to be uploading them straight to YouTube. Now you can either email them the files or share them in some other way. But once you start getting into um, sharing files with students and the files are large and the email can't handle it, you can start to run into some issues. So upload those to YouTube. YouTube is free. Your students are already familiar with it. And then you can share those links in whatever formats or whatever um, platforms you have in place with your students already. So I mentioned at the beginning, the handouts and the questions, please feel free to continue entering those questions. I'm actually gonna kick it over to Pam right now. She's gonna take over from me and walk through how to do what we're talking about, how to use those programs that I just mentioned. So Pam, if you are ready, I'm gonna go ahead and make you the presenter here. All right, you should be all set. Okay, hey there everyone, welcome again. I'm so glad to hear, thank you, Robbie. That was a great introduction and a great, a lot of information there. So please look at those handouts. All of that information is also found on the handout as well. So I'm gonna start off by talking about the first item that Robbie mentioned, and that was the digital hardware. So whenever education was thrown for this big curveball, even us at Get More Math were thinking about ways that we could, you know, help our teachers and even help the students out as best we could. And we were researching and looking into things. And the one thing that I found that I think really made a big difference was that digital writing tablet. So I'm going to show you where it is. It's right here. It's called a Wacom digital tablet. It comes with a pen. It's about half the size of a sheet of paper. And all you do is just take the cord, it has a USB cord, and you simply just hook it up to your computer. And then you go through the on-screen instructions and it's gonna tell you on how to set it up and how it works. 
So of course, you know, my one go-to is always let me watch some YouTube videos. If I can watch a YouTube video and shows me how to do it, it makes my life a lot easier. So one of the YouTube videos said, this feature, this board acts a lot like a mouse. And they said, go on and play solitaire so you can get used to using it as a mouse feature. So that's what I've been doing. Don't tell my boss, but it does work just like a mouse. I'm just hovering that pen right over top of the board and it allows me to click and move around. Now let's see how it really works in our application for education. So let me go ahead and sh I'm gonna hide my screen so that you can really focus on what I'm showing you here. So I am in PowerPoint. So where I feel that the pen really shines is in any kind of application that allows you to draw. So I'm gonna open up a, a blank page here in PowerPoint. And at the very top in the menu bar, I'm gonna choose draw. When I choose draw, I have the ability to draw and erase. And as you can see, I have built a customized um, palette here of all the different pens that I can use. I'm able to go over here and I, again, I'm using my pen to do all of this. I can choose, you know, a new pen, a highlighter, a pencil. And when I make that choice, it's placed onto my uh, palette here. And then I can just go down, change the size of the point, change the color, and then select the pen. And then I'm able to go ahead and just write right on the board. Now it's not actually writing on the board. It's writing on my screen but the board is where I put the pen so that it does transfer over to the screen. And it makes it for a nice seamless way to kind of put my message out there. What do I love about this? Well, honestly, I love it for math because if I was gonna have my students, you know, maybe graph a circle and I needed parentheses and I needed powers, this tool is so wonderful and helping really convey that information to my students um, and it's easy to write with. And that's why I really like it. Now, I know I've, I've taught in the classroom as well. And I was always one of those people that was like uberly prepared. I always had to have everything ready for my students. If you decide to use the PowerPoint slideshow, I know there's a tool in the bottom left corner that allows you to write where this pen can write as well. But it does not showcase all of the tools that I have put up here on my screen. So basically what I would suggest doing is I'd say minimize this left side. So now you can maximize the screen so that when you're making recordings or meeting with your students, now you have the ability to choose all of these different um, options at the top. Now, I was always a person who had notes pre-written or pre-printed, or I always had worksheets already made. And that's kind of the beauty behind this. You can pull up any PowerPoint presentation that you've already created or you already have in your wheelhouse, and you can use that. And along with the writing tool, you can go ahead and you can do your instruction, and then you can come over to the side here and you can do your work as well. It just makes it nice. And I know as a teacher, we have a lot of this information already made that we can kind of refer to. Another great feature that I love about Microsoft Office and their products is once I have customized this pen bar on the top for my PowerPoint, if I go over to like maybe Word and I go to the draw option here in the Word document, because a lot of the times I have my notes and stuff in Word, that same palette is here, which is so helpful that I don't have to recreate it. And again, here's a great way. You've got your notes already written. You're gonna come in here and maybe you're gonna write the equation of a line. Again, I'm just using that pen. I can fill in the information down here with my intercept. I can fill it in with my slope. I can graph the line and so on and so forth. But I do wanna point out that this is, that's completely optional. I just feel like it makes it a little easier when I'm um, dealing with areas where I need to write. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll here and show you how you can use um, this idea without the pen. So your mouse can be used as well, as well. So I'm not using the pen now. I'm gonna take my mouse. I'm gonna come up to the top, grab myself one of those pencils or pens that I made, and I'm just using my mouse to write. So it works the same exact way. I, it just takes a little bit more effort on my part to get my strokes correct and I'm good. Another option that we have or you have as well that's available is at the very top, it might say draw with trackpad. 
So when I turn that on, what it does is it gives me like a, a exact replica of what my trackpad on my computer looks like. I can use two fingers to kind of move it around to the location where I want to work. And then I basically find that position on my trackpad and I can write right there with my finger. So I can see I want to put the Y intercept kind of on the left side, halfway down. So that's where I go to my trackpad on the left side, about halfway down. And I can just put that in there. And then on the bottom, I can put in the slope. So I just want to make sure that you're fully aware that using those draw tools works really well when you have that pen, but you can also manage greatly without that pen. Okay, so now, Pam, you're saying to yourself, this is awesome. I love this. This is great. But how am I going to get all this information to my students? I love the idea of drawing and writing and using my already built notes. But how am I going to present this to my kiddos? So that's going to lead us into our next option, which is the web conferencing. So I'm going to go ahead and slide over here to my internet. And I'm going to look at the first thing that Robbie said that it's basically the pick that we love the most, and that is Zoom. And I know a lot of schools are using Zoom. They've been awesome about helping out education. So all you simply need to do if you don't have a Zoom account is just go to zoom.us. When you are here, you will just sign up for a free account. There's a place here. You'll walk through the steps and you'll get it all signed up. Now, the IT department for Zoom is phenomenal. They'll help you out as much as they can or lean on the IT department at your school to help you get that set up as well. But once you get that all set up, you know, the purpose of this is to one is to interact with your students to actually see them and um, communicate with them and have a little interaction kind of like if you were in the classroom. So once it's set up, I'm going to go ahead over here to the left side. Hopefully you can see that. And if you're a little a scroll button bar, or your um, menu bars in the way, you can just move that. I'm going to select my account, and what's going to happen is the profile that I've created is now there. I could change settings. There's certain settings I can change within my profile, or even here on the left side, there are settings you can change as well. But let's get into how I can create a meeting. So I go to meetings, which is right underneath my profile tab. I already have two meetings scheduled for today. And to schedule a meeting is super easy. All you do is click on schedule a new meeting. You're gonna just simply type in the meeting here. So I'm just gonna type in GMM, whoops, we'll work with a capital M. Okay, you can put a description, you can put the day, you can put the time, you can put the duration. Um, you can make this reoccurring. So maybe you're gonna meet with your students the same time every day, you can go ahead and choose that. Again, there are some settings down here on the bottom. Um, I'm gonna turn my video on so that it's uh, there whenever I log in. And once everything is pretty much set how you want it, you just hit save. If I go back to meetings over here, you can see there's where they are. Now, how do I now share this with my students? Well, you simply just click on the meeting. So I'm gonna click on this period one meeting that I've already um, got scheduled. And within there, you can see there is a join URL. It gives you a link to the Zoom meeting that you've set up. So you simply just come to the right here, you click on copy the invitation, you'll hit copy the meeting invitation, and then you're free to go ahead and paste it into either an email or into your Google Classroom or into your web page. And therefore, the students then have all the information. They have the time, they have the date, and they have the link that they can use to join that Zoom meeting. They really, all they need to join is this meeting ID number. So that is another way they can join. If you just post that meeting ID number, again, in any of those platforms for the students to go ahead and use, they can come to the same website, zoom.us, and they can click on join meeting right here, and they can just enter that ID number. So there are quite a few ways that students can go ahead and join your meeting. So let's go ahead back. And now once you're ready to roll, you got this meeting set up, you've informed your students about the meeting, it is now time to start. So all you do is choose start right here. It's going to go through the logistics of getting that up and running. And it's opening for me here on my computer. 
and voila, there we are. So I'm going to show you, here I am. Hey, there I am on Zoom. Um, and now I'm just kind of waiting for my students while I'm here trying to like get myself organized. So again, I'm just going to hide my face, but I'm here, don't worry. So I'm going to hit start, uh, stop the video. So across the bottom here, you can see I have the ability to mute myself. And I am going to turn that mute off only because we are on GoToWebinar, that's why. I have the ability here to invite students. And if you heard that little ding dong, that means there is somebody that has joined my class. So I can go to invite to invite students, like I was saying, but I can hit right here, manage participants. And what happens on the right side, I get myself a really nice panel of myself and all of my kiddos that have entered. I have the ability to turn their mic on or off. I can unmute them and I can also deal with their camera too. So, you know, the nice thing is, is I can have all my students' cameras on and I can look at them all as like little postage stamps all over the screen and we can have interaction. We can talk and it, it's a nice environment. It gives those kids a feeling of like, wow, this is something familiar and, and you know, those kids are missing out too. So anything we can do to help them. There actually is a chat. Um, as well that exist here. Um, if I select the chat, I'm able to then go ahead and chat over here on the right with everybody, or I can chat individually with a student. So you can make your chat private, or you can make it for everyone to see. So I love that feature as well. Another thing that's really cool, and it really allows for a um, nice formative assessment is Right below on the student screen, they're going to see everybody that's a participant. So they, they have down the bottom here the ability to ch check participants. And then they get this nice little um, icon bar where they can check yes, no. And if they open up the more button, they can put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So I can see that Robin is a student in my class now. Robin, can you hear me okay? And she's giving me a thumbs up right there. And then I can just clear that out. And so that's not, that's going to be great interaction for your kids. They're going to love all that. Now, setting up this conference is awesome. So let's see now how we can deliver content to them. So at the very bottom of your screen, there is a share screen uh, option. And one cool thing that Zoom has when I do a share screen option is they have this whiteboard that I can share. And what I love about this whiteboard, and this can be used in conjunction with the pen, the Intuos tablet that I bought, or it can just be simply used using my finger. So what I get is I get a big old whiteboard that all of my students can see. And what I can do is I can pick the draw value and I can come down here and I can, you know, I can actually do my lesson. I can say to my kiddos, oh, that's supposed to be a five. Five X is equal to 10. And there's my equation. And I have some options, like up here is the control panel, and I can come over to more, and I can say show names of annotators. Here's what is so cool. This is one of the interactions you can do with your kids. I could say, hey, Robin, why don't you go ahead up to the top of your bar? It's going to say instead of stop share, it's going to say view options. She can click on view options, and then she can click on annotate. And I can say, hey, Robin, why don't you go ahead and finish this equation for me? So as she moves and navigates up to the top, she'll have the ability then to write right on this screen so that I can see her work and how well she's doing. So I can see there's her name. And she's probably saying, oh, Pam, my pen is so, she doesn't even have a pen. So she's like saying, it's not working so well because there's lots of people on the call. But realize how nice this is. They can put their answers in there. I know who put it in there. This really opens up that digital learning and you can communicate. I have the ability to come in here and say, Robin, correct, give her a heart, and I can then clear the entire screen. So that is exactly what that whiteboard is going to do. I love that feature. So let's see what else we can do with this. So I'm going to go back up to the top and I'm going to do a new share, but this time I'm going to share my entire desktop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate back to my PowerPoint. So I'm going to go ahead and close all those out there. And here I am. So once again, I mentioned that having slides ready is always so helpful. So also when you're in Zoom, if you've got your slideshows ready, then you can just simply, here we go. And this is how you can instruct your students. And again, using the pen or your keyboard, you can come to the top, you can select the pen you want, you can underline the things you want. Again, my 
computer's working a little bit slow. We got lots of people on here, which is awesome. Um, and you can do that interaction with them. And I love that. And I can move to the next slide and I can even like right on here. Oops, let me hit okay on that one. Something's not right there. Um, I can even write on here something like to my kiddos. All right, I want you to go ahead and I want you to order these numbers. And I want you to find the number that's in the middle. And again, this is kind of my way of checking to see if they understand hit that middle, right? At the very top, I can manage my participants. Again, here is everybody. Here's my panel. And I could just say, okay, listen, once you get them ordered and you find the middle, I want you to give me a thumbs up. I want you to show me that you understand. So that the kids are working and they're and they're moving along and they can check the yes or they can check the no or they could, you know, they are able to chat. They can send you a chat like I'm not quite sure. So all of that's really helpful. And then just continue on with your lesson. You know, we find the middle, have those pre-prepared slides so that you can say, okay, our next one is let's look at the extremes, let's look at the median and the quartiles, and let's look at the graph, just to kind of give you an idea. If you are using get more math. This is also another great way to have interaction with the kids using that as well. So let's head on back to um, my, if I can find it here, here we go. And I'm gonna log in as a student. Maybe it's one of my um, fake student accounts that I have. And so again, I'm still in Zoom, I'm still uh, interacting with my students and I'm gonna go up to the top here and now I'm gonna choose annotate because that is one of the features that it has. It gives me that ability to draw and I can change the color. I know kids like colors for some reason. And I can come right to my screen here and I can annotate right here. So I can actually put the uh, problem up that I want my students to practice. I can say, okay guys, we talked about inner quartile range. You all know that means that's IQR. How do we find it? We take quartile three, we subtract, oh, that's the wrong one, quartile three, we subtract quartile one, and you can write right here to deliver that instruction. And then you can actually model how to put the answer into the program. So if you're telling your students, you know, this is what we need to do, then you just simply say, we've got 96 minus 90, we could put six in, let me come to my program here, and I could check that answer, I get my smileys, I can clear my annotations and now I have another problem that I can address as well. So all of that is just great ways to get those students to interact. So let me head back to Zoom, I'm gonna stop sharing. So now what I would do, my face back up there, is I would just be available. I'd be ready to answer questions. If the kids had any questions, they could chat with me all they wanted to. I could manage my students on the side. Um, there also is an awesome feature where if a student says, hey, Mrs. Long, I'm not really getting this problem, they can share their screen and I can look at their problem and I can annotate on their screen as well. So get into Zoom and play around. There's lots of great features and I think the kids are gonna love this interaction. It's totally different than what they're accustomed to um, and it really does open up that gate for us to instruct them and help them as much as we can outside of that classroom. So now let's move on to my next big thing. I just love conferencing with my students. What happens if students are absent? You know, what happens if we can't reach them? Well, let's move on to how we can record videos. Recording videos is another really cool thing. And right inside Zoom, you have the ability to record. So I'm gonna turn off my screen again. Down here at the bottom, you can see there is a record button. So you can either record the conference that you are ho currently hosting, or you could just make a Zoom video. You can open up a Zoom meeting and just make a video on your own. When I hit record, I get the ability down here now to pause or stop it. I actually get a recording button up here and it's recording everything that I'm doing. I, I don't wanna record the entire um, meeting. I can pause it and I can start recording all over again. Once you're done recording, you just simply stop the recording it's going to tell you an MP4 is going to be created when you end the meeting. All right, well, let's go ahead and end the meeting. So I'm going to X out of this meeting. Yep, we're going to end it for all. And as you can see now, it is converting that meeting to an MP4, and it then puts it onto my desktop. So here it is. I can play it back if I want, which I don't really need to. 
but I can take that file and I can then email it to students. I can post it onto my Google um, Classroom. I can put it on my webpage. However, my kids are going to be able to get to it. So Zoom is also great, not only for interaction and uh, conversation with your students, but it's also amazing for recording. There's another feature out there that I want to go over that we feel is even better for recording, and that is called Screencastify. If you don't know about Screencastify, it's easy to find. It's just screencastify.com. Remember, all of this information along with the um, links are going to be in those handouts over on the side if you download them. Again, Screencastify is completely free. You can set up a free account here, but like Robbie said, it only works if you're using a Chrome browser and you can create a Chrome extension. And again, they're gonna walk you through it. Their IT department is pretty amazing. Once you set that up, at the very top in your menu bar, you're gonna get a little icon that represents the extension. When you click on that, that is how you're going to start your screen recording. You can choose a browser to record, the desktop, the camera, your microphones here. You actually have other options as well. But one thing I definitely want to point out to you is it's really important about Screencastify is you only have a five minute limit. It's supposed to be a quick, short, focused video on exactly the information you want to give your students. Maybe you want to model some problems. Maybe you want to, you know, just put some notes out for, there for them to work on. So keep that in mind. Because it's five minutes, what we highly recommend is doing some prior prep work before you hit the record button. Because if you're ready to go, then when you hit that record button, it's easy for you just to make your recording and off you go. So prior prep work might mean something like this. If I head over to the teacher um, screen, the teacher application for Get More Math, and I go to the work tab right here, there might be a practice set, single event probability that I've created and I want my students to practice that. If I open up that um, skill, I get a visual of one sample problem that my students may see. And I might think that's the only problem they're going to get involving marbles. But the refresh cycle arrow over here, if I click on that, it's going to give me a visual of other problems. Oh, there's problems about lollipops and problems about marbles and scraps and cubes and spinners. So there's a lot of different types of problems here. But I want to make sure that I address all of them with my students because I don't want to just do one example and assume that's going to be enough. So suppose I want to get a snippet of each of the different examples so I can work on them with my students. Well, one thing I can do is just take a picture of the problem. I have a MacBook Pro, so I'm going to explain how to do it on a MacBook. But if you have a PC. Down in your bottom left corner where the start button is, type into the um, search bar snipping tool. There's a snipping tool out there for PCs that works in the exact same manner. It allows you to snip a certain section or a certain part and then paste it elsewhere. It was my saving grace when I was teaching in the classroom. I love to use it. From the math perspective, what I have to do is hit Control, Shift, Command, and 4 at the same time. And again, this is all on that handout that is listed over on the side panel. Feel free to download it. So Control, Command, Shift, and 4 gives me these crosshairs. I then highlight what I want. It takes a picture of it and puts it onto my clipboard. Now, if I navigate back to my PowerPoint, maybe I've already done that with a problem that involved the spinner and I pasted it on here. Or maybe I've done it with the marbles and I pasted it on here. So now I wanna add this one with the cards. So to paste it, I just hit Control and V at the same time and there it is. So sometimes that to me was just a wonderful tool that I could get a perfect visual of what I want my kids to see and look at and work through. Another thing that you can do um, and to prepare, you could do it this way or let me head back to the teacher application. If I would start this practice set with my class, remember when I hit start, all skills go into our mixed review. If I then go to my class 
and I look at their mixed review and I order by date added, there is that um, practice set, that skill I put in the practice set. So now what I can do is I could actually model it from here if I wanted to. And if I wanted to as well, I could log in as like a fake student and I can model it from there. So I want to have all of those open so that I can show you um, how this Screencastify is going to work. So let me get through that with you. So I'm going to go back to Screencastify here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that little extension. I'm going to hit record. It's going to show my face in the corner. There I am. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share my entire screen. And then it's going to count down. And now what it's doing, it's recording my whole screen. So I'm going to share this. I'm going to hide my face again, just because I don't want it to distract you. And here's what you can do. It's, it's recording what you're doing. So you can go back to PowerPoint. Again, either using your mouse or your pen, you can then address these problems. You can say, all right, kids, we're looking for the probability of not stopping on a brick area. Here's our brick area. The rest are not. We know that it's going to be five, six, the probability of not. And you can go through all of that and you can make notes over on the side here. Move to the next problem, model practice. Move to the next problem, model practice. So you've got those quick, already created problems ready to go. Now, if you go back to get more math and you want to model from there, Screencastify actually has its own set of tools down here in the bottom left. So what I could do is I can go ahead down and grab the pen and I can write right here on the screen. I've got a spinner. It has four parts. Two parts are pink and one part is speckled and one part is black. What is the probability that it's going to stop at a pink section? And I can model this. Woo, it's going all the way around. My hand slipped there. Okay. And then what I can do, whoa, let's keep going. I can come back down and I can model how I now use these features underneath the problem and I can enter it as a um, two over four and it will check my answer. I can also do this if I logged in as a fake student. That toolbar is still available down here on the bottom. I can go ahead and select that pencil or pen. I can write right in here. I can show all my work, which I love. And then again, modeling for the students how to input the answer is often, you know, especially when we're not with them, it's they might get a little frustrated. So from our perspective, um, in using the program, just sometimes showing them from their screen how to do it, it actually is a great little feature and it helps them out a lot. When you're all done, remember you got five minutes, simply select the icon and again at the top, you're going to choose stop and what's going to happen is it's automatically going to be shared to your google drive you can see here's the whole recording going here for me once it's shared to your google drive then you have tons of ways to share this with your students and that's why we love screencastify you can over on the side here you can publish it to youtube you can simply click on that pick your channel make it public private unlisted put a description in and upload it it then uploads it to youtube it then provides you with a link that you can just copy and share with your students it actually this is so cool it generates a qr code you could share this with your students to email google classroom and they could just take um, their phone scan the qr code and watch your video you can do an embedded code for them. You can share it right to Google Classroom from here or send an email. So super simple in terms of getting that information out to your students and uh, providing them all the necessary information that they need. Thanks, guys. I really hope that was helpful. I really hope that I, I gave you a lot of maybe cool little things that you know might spark your interest and you might be able to use in your own classroom. Um, and again, I'm going to kick it right back to Robbie here. Let's see if I can get it back to him. And um, awesome. You got it, Robbie? I got it. Thank you so much, Pam. Um, and we are going to just take some time to address some questions here. Let me turn my camera back on so you can see me. Um, I have been trying to answer questions as much as possible as we've been going through this. There were a lot of very specific questions. Um, hopefully, I answered 
um, some of those for you folks, but a few that were being repeated by a lot of people um, had to do with the Wacom pen. There was one that said, um, "Can there is there a Bluetooth version? So I know that there are Bluetooth options available. Um, I would suggest just going to their website and seeing. The one that we showed is one of their cheaper options. Um, Pam, does that one have a Bluetooth option available? Absolutely has a, a Bluetooth yes. option. It was just a okay. little more expensive. And I don't know, okay. teacher budget myself, I just try to pick the most economical one. So, yeah. But there absolutely is a Bluetooth one, yeah. Awesome. So the easiest way to find that would be to go to their website and see what their options are. Um, and that's a great segue um, that one of the handouts is a list of all of these resources. So the list of resources has the ones that we've highlighted as well as the ones that we didn't highlight just if you want a reference to go see some of those other options. Um, but we list easy, you know, easy to use links and stuff you can get there as well. Some other questions had to do with the features that were being presented in Zoom and whether or not they were all available in the free version. The great thing is Pam's using the free version. So everything that Pam showed you is available in the free version. So there's no need to upgrade. Um, but like I said, if you contact them, they are making that readily available so that you can use that. And I had somebody actually contact me as well while we were doing this to say that Screencastify is doing the same thing. So Screencastify's website actually says, if you reach out to their sales team right now, they are making their upgraded pro version free for educators. They already provide, I think, like an 80% discount for educators. Like that's their default because they want to put it in your hands. Um, but right now they're doing going even a step further and making that free. Um, and there's just a promo code that you need. And that promo code actually, which was shared with us as well, is cast underscore COVID. So cast as in Castify underscore COVID. Um, and you can use that. And if you don't remember that or don't have access to that, just contact Screencastify and they'll help you out as well. But that'll allow you to upgrade to that pro version, which means you can uh, record longer than five minute videos. Awesome. So uh, we still recommend the short and sweet ones. Those are nice. They're much easier to digest for your students. But if you have a longer lesson that you need to record, um, you can do that as well. Let's see. Another question that we got a lot, and unfortunately I don't have a definitive answer for you, is um, does the Wacom Pen you work on Google Apps? And my answer is, I believe it should. Anywhere that you can use the drawing feature, um, the Wacom Pen works pretty intuitively. It basically works like a mouse. Mm -hmm. So anywhere that a program offers you the ability to draw, you can already do that with your mouse or your trackpad. The pen just gives you a way to do that a little bit more easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and say the answer is yes. Um, anywhere where you can draw, you should be able to use your pen. Yes. And let's see anything else here. And then the other thing that I heard, and this was just another recommendation for another resource, actually from um, Tara Krebs. So thank you, Tara. Um, she said she's been using Sketchpad. Sketchpad is a free um, software that you can just use to kind of write. And so whether you're using a pen or a mouse or whatever it is, it's just a place where you can kind of write and record what you're doing and keep track of that. Tara is actually somebody who um, we were talking to earlier today because she has been recording videos for her students. So thanks for adapting and being creative, Tara. She actually is recording herself doing an entire practice set. So making sure that her students know how to do the practice set. And then she sends that over with the assignment that they have to work on. So a really great example of modeling for your students how to do the problems, showing them what's expected in the program uh, before actually having them do it. So thank you so much, Tara. Um, I believe that's it. Oh, the one last thing I wanted to mention, and this was brought up in a couple of questions as well, was the security preferences in Zoom. Um, there are, whether it's Zoom or even Screencastify, honestly, even with YouTube, we know how sensitive it is um, when you're sharing information or when students are sharing information online. So make sure that everything you're doing is com in compliance with whatever your school's um, security and privacy pr uh, policies are. If you have any question about whether or not you're allowed to share a video or have a web conference, make sure you reach out to the proper people at your school to get confirmation that that's allowed. Um, don't just say get more math said do it and so you can do it, that's not how this works. Um, do make sure that you are in compliance. That is very, very important. We want to make sure that everyone's privacy and security are protected. Um, and we all recognize that we're in a unique circumstance here, but we want to continue to adhere to those rules that are in place. 
Uh, anything else from you, Pam? Um, that's that's all I've got in terms of questions. No, and, and just to let you know that we're here to help you guys through this as well. We're learning just as much as you have. Everything I've shown you, I've literally learned in the last like week and a half. So we're here to learn and help. So please, at any time, we're we're available to support you and help you and, and, and be creative with you. So just let us know what we can do. Awesome, absolutely. And if you're interested in using Get More Math and you aren't already signed up, our website has that free trial button. You can then enter your information and get signed up. We provide free training. So in addition to the webinars like this one and the webinar on worksheets that Josh talked about earlier, remember that webinar is next Wednesday. In addition to those webinars, we do free online training sessions that are about 30 minutes long. And we primarily talk about how to use Get More Math. But if you have questions about other things, we're happy to help out with that as well. And then there have been a lot of questions about how do I get access to this video after it's done? Don't worry, if you are registered for this webinar, which if you're here, good news, you're registered, um, we will be sending you the recorded version of this webinar as well. So you'll be able to go back, you can share that with colleagues, share that with other folks, or just watch it again for your own reference. We'll also send a certificate of completion. We know you're all looking for that uh, professional development cer certificate. That's in there as well. Um, and then, like I said, keep an eye out for future webinars and uh, free training that we offer. So thank you all so much for joining. Thank you for all the work that you do in helping your students understand math and retain the gains that they've been making this year. We really appreciate what you're doing. Um, keep it up. Keep being creative. Keep adapting. We're going to get through this together. So everybody have a great day. Bye-bye. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.